this happened when I was about 25 years old so probably 10 years ago now I live in a fairly large city in England I'm not gonna say where for security reasons but let's say I live in a fairly well-known uni town I used to see students coming to and from uni all the time going out to bars on the weekends and coming back I lived in the ground floor of a flat and obviously being that level a lot of people walk past my window and to be honest I never thought anything of it I just kind of blocked it out I had blinds and not curtains which will come in later in the story but anyway I've always been a bit of a solitude kind of person I don't really socialize that much and I quite like my own company so being on the ground floor of a flat by myself just doing my little part-time job suited me down to the ground at the time nowadays that wouldn't be possible with the price of things but back then I was able to manage to scrape by anyway I used to go to sleep around 10 11 o'clock at night normally I'd have the TV on in the background just for a little bit of noise not too loud just so I had something in the background and it wasn't eerily dark and quiet like I say I always used to see people walking past my window any time of day really even at night as there was lots of local bars and students would be coming back even midweek 2 3 a.m. at times so I just ignored it most of the time it was just drunk people and people having a laugh this one night I woke up probably at 2 a.m. I'm not entirely sure of the time but it was definitely very late as it was pitch black outside all I could see was the illumination of the street from the lamps outside out the corner of my blind which I hadn't fully closed as I'd forgotten I could see what looked like a figure an outline of a dark figure I couldn't make it out and I rubbed my eyes and tried to focus on what was in the corner of my blinds but by the time I looked it was gone now I'm not great at describing things but let me try and describe what exactly I saw like I say I could just about make out the illumination of the street from the street lights and my blinds were kind of half open half closed so I could see slits and not the full image but what I could make out from what I could see was face in the corner of my window just peering in my flat that creeped me out but at this time of night that could have just been my brain playing tricks on me I tried to shrug it off and I went back to sleep about two weeks later I woke up around the same time of night and I wiped my eyes and put my glasses on and what I could see was what looked like the figure of a human staring through my window at night I stared back at it and tried to figure out if maybe it was just the branch off of a bush that looked like a human or if maybe my mind was playing tricks on me and it was just a shadow I stared at it for a good minute and it stared back at me I couldn't make out features or anything but it was definitely human looking that's when it moved across to the center line of my window and was peering in as if it was looking at what was inside of my flat it was definitely a person and they were definitely scalping out my house I had a fight flight or freeze response but for me I just froze I didn't know what to do and I was scared to do anything in case it had a weapon or bad intentions after about 10 more seconds they eventually left that made me realize that I need to up my security and definitely close my blinds so I installed an extra lock on my door and also made sure that I close my blinds every night I kept this up for a good six months and thankfully nothing happened and there were no reports of anything happening nearby I spoke to some of my neighbors about it and none of them had similar experiences it was just me about six or seven months had passed and I grew a little bit complacent so one night I fell asleep with the blinds just open again the same thing happened in the same corner of the window but it didn't look as though they were staring at the possessions in my house this time it looks as though they were staring at me this time though I didn't freeze and I shot up out my bed and ran towards my window at this point the person took off running across the road I couldn't make out any features of them but they were dressed in all black and had the hood up and that's about all I know I moved to another flat probably about two or three miles away I've not heard any reports of it happening since and to be honest I have no idea on what their intentions were but the thought of what could have happened scares me
I work part time as a park ranger meaning that I'm called out whenever they need me and sometimes I'll just back up the main force. I'm also not in the United States of America so there might be some differences I don't really know much about your guys park rangers but hopefully you still enjoy my story. Now being out in the forest was something that I often enjoyed but it could get incredibly cold where I live. You didn't always have to go far to find snow in my country. Whether that means it's summer or winter, there was always snow at least somewhere, regardless if you had to go higher up the north to find it. Now, where I was stationed it was often snowy, but I didn't have any problem with that. It just meant that my normal was kind of being in the snowy conditions, but that wasn't really an issue. So I've really enjoyed this career and it's something that I was doing while studying simultaneously. I found that it gave me quite a nice balance and it was kind of like an adventure getting called out to go out into the forest and often search for people or just investigate things and I found it really cool. I was never too worried because they would know where I was going and what I was doing so the chances of myself becoming lost were pretty low. I remember that I got a call that I had to go out and search for a particular person that apparently wandered off the trail. So I head out. It's not really too dark at this point, it's just kind of nice outside I guess where there was a bit of a wind chill but nothing too bad. I know we can get some incredibly annoying ones where you actually don't want your face to be near anything but this one wasn't bad at all. The good thing I found too is when looking for these lost people they often didn't go far off the trail, and because we're blessed with snow, it meant I could just trace footprints, and that's what I was doing. I probably search for about a good 40 minutes, and I find some steps and I follow them. The steps just look like somebody wandering off the trail, and god knows why somebody would have went here. It meant that you had to duck down literally every 2 or 3 minutes to avoid getting a face full of snow from the low hanging branches, but each to their own I would guess. Now I eventually find somebody up ahead and I can see them just wandering with some red coat on. I call out hello and they don't reply. I call out hello again and they still don't stop. And I wasn't actually meant to do this but I actually just grab a snowball and lob it at them. Now it hits them and they finally turn around and they seem to be very surprised to see someone. I say hey what are you doing you're miles off the path we're looking for you. They then motion with their hands to wait a minute and I'm a little confused. I don't know why they've been ignoring me too. I genuinely consider that maybe they can't hear me whatsoever and they can't hear and they've just got lost or something. But they take off some headphones. They say what? I shout hey. We've been searching for you. You know the park closed a few hours ago and they say really? I say yeah, I say where were you going? And they say that they were following the trowel. I then explain to them that they shouldn't really go off the trowel and how incredibly dangerous it is and eventually they come back with me. Now this person says that they don't know why they just had the urge to keep going and I say that it's incredibly dangerous but I do think this is quite bizarre. They're basically completely fine and decided to go off on their own little adventure but I was just relieved to find the person and we both walked back together. Now we come up to a small bridge and I go across it first because they say they're a little worried. I kind of danced across to show that it was safe and I turn back and they're gone. I can't believe it, I think god are you joking, I've just rescued this person and now they've gone off again. Almost like if you found a dog that's your own and it's ran off and you have to rescue it then it runs off immediately after. I wasn't too annoyed because there was still quite a lot of daylight so I just head back and call out hey and then I can find them. They're hiding behind a tree almost, gripping to it, scared to go across the bridge. Now a little annoyed I say come on we have to go, just trust me and I hold their arm and we make it across the bridge. After about another 20 minutes or so of walking we eventually make it back to the main station and I get them in and warm again. My colleagues just thanked me for my service and I say no it's my pleasure and I go about the rest of my day. 
Now the next day we get a call out again. This time it was only for myself as the other person that did this part time couldn't get out of their work so I was on my own. Now apparently there was an area that I needed to go and check out because people have been reporting hearing some strange sounds and seeing some weird activities along the lines of a group of people going out here they're not seeming to come back again. We were definite that they weren't hikers and this was only off of word of mouth from other hikers that have noticed this but it seemed pretty weird. Now no, I'm not one of them people that's going to throw myself into really dangerous situations and I knew if something was up or if they come from me I definitely wasn't sticking around and I wasn't going to enforce much of anything other than my own running away. Now when I set off things are pretty nice. It's actually a little colder than the previous day, which I didn't have too much of an issue with. So, I set off into the snow. Now this time you can actually see lots and lots of footsteps, and I have a general area that I'm following. Now you can see that there was lots of other hikers here, but this was an issue for me, because now it means that I haven't really got any footsteps to follow. I presumed that I was going to run into a group of people that were camping out here or doing something stupid in a hot tent they weren't supposed to. So I just continue on. Now this isn't what you guys say as a national park but it was a protected forest so I was pretty mindful of the fact that there shouldn't be too many people camping here. I eventually make it up to another small bridge where I can't see any footsteps other than the ones that I'm creating. I got up some steps and realised that this is a little bit bizarre because I haven't seen this before. I'm not really too worried about it right now though, so I just keep on going. I eventually come up to almost the boundary of the area that I'm supposed to search, and I do see the traces of something. There seems to be something which is darker colour up ahead of a few trees, but there's no footsteps and I can't really see much of anything there. I realise that there's definitely a structure I haven't seen before and I'm pretty convinced that I'm looking at a tent here. I've waded my way through the snow and I actually go off of the path a bit further now. You can tell nobody ever really goes up here, it's very far and there's not much to see here. The snow picks up a bit now and it kind of reduces my visibility and it means that I'm not going to really see much of this thing until I'm pretty much on top of it, but that's fine. I keep on going and eventually I'm just about within sight of this thing and that's the first bizarre thing. It's quite large. It's almost like a large wooden structure but it's something that is not on my map and something that I haven't seen before. I decide that I should go and investigate it and I'm pretty convinced this is something that the old timers used to use long before I was born or even my parents. I can't really see much of this thing but it's almost like a weird effect where the closer I get the larger it seems to become. Not in the sense of perspective change but impossibly. It almost looks like a two story wooden structure but with no windows, just a door. Ah, this is pretty bizarre. I get very close to it and put my hand on it just to make sure it's real. I notice suddenly that things are weirdly quiet but that's fine. Where I am there's not many animals or insects of course so this is kind of normal and I make my way around one side of it. I realise that this shouldn't be here and I go to flick on my radio and report it in but what do you know radio is not working. It's no worries though, I just flip in another battery and I report in what I'm seeing. They ask me for my coordinates but I can't seem to get anything up on the GPS. It's quite weird, it's almost like when I went into this kind of valley section of the park, or forest, whatever, that I seem to lose pretty much all reception. This isn't an issue though, and I just take a few steps back. I decide the best thing to do now is try and get an advantage point. I'm not going to go up a tree because I can't climb, though it seems like it might be a good option because I have to hike a bit of a way up a hill. I'm not sure whether there's more of these things and it is a really entirely bizarre new experience for me, so I start to make my way up the hill. I don't see any hikers or anybody around so after eventually getting up there and surveying I realise that this thing seems to have just been put there out of nowhere. 
which is pretty bizarre. One of my colleagues reassures me saying that yeah there's probably things that weren't mapped out too well and not to worry. But I don't know, I have a weird feeling about this. After standing on top of my hill, I eventually come back down again and decide that I'm going to investigate the structure. No, I'm not feeling fear or anything, but weirdly I do seem to notice new footsteps that are somewhat different from my own. Now they aren't like normal footsteps, so it's almost like trailing along, but with breaks in the trowels if that makes sense. This is going to sound like a weird explanation, but it's almost like an animal's been skiing around here, but I know it's not that. I know the area well, and it's definitely no animal that I'm aware of, so I'm pretty sure people have caused that. I'm a little bit concerned because they seem like relatively fresh tracks, probably a couple of minutes newer than my own, but that's fine. I reassure myself, yeah, it's just an animal like a rabbit, and maybe it's just getting hunted or chased, and... I decide to go towards the door. I give some knocks on the door and quickly stand back, expecting some people to jump out and capture me, but nothing happens. I'm not really sure what to do now. I decide to walk off and just sit in the snow close to a tree for a couple of minutes and just wait and see what happens. I don't know why, but that seems to be the best thing that I can do in this moment. Just to hold off and just be nice and quiet and figure out what's actually happening. I drink some water from my canteen and I'm almost tempted to light up a cigarette but I know that's quite a stupid idea. I can suddenly feel my nerves coming on a bit stronger now and that's actually what I decided to do. It's kind of out of character for me and I don't really smoke much too, it's just my friend giving me a couple from when we had a night out not long ago and I thought it might be a relaxing thing to do if ever I was walking through here. But I don't know, it didn't do much to calm my nerves. I decide that I should investigate and I don't know why, I kind of felt like drawn to this thing. Now, while I get up and start walking, I have a moment where I suddenly go dizzy and for a few seconds I seem to have a change of scenery. It's like I'm watching myself walk on a different path, kind of like from bird's eye view, which is really bizarre. I suddenly snap out of it after a couple of minutes and I presume that the cigarette brush has got to my head. After not long I'm now face to face with the door. And I knock on it one more time and there's nothing. The door also doesn't have windows, which is odd, but I have a little headlamp thing I can tie onto my beanie, and I do that. I put the light on, and I open the door. Weirdly it wasn't locked, which I think is pretty bizarre, but when I open this place there are some lights on. I don't actually need the headlamp, but it's bizarre, it's very barren. It's almost like a very large room with not much in the middle other than a table and a phone. I call out hello again and I don't hear anybody. I think maybe this is an old station and I'm not actually that worried realising it's her own thing. I stand in here for a couple of minutes just trying to take it all in and there's a strange smell. It almost smells like meat that's gone off for a day or two but not exactly the same. And kind of just like really old wood. Now my ears start ringing. I jump as I realise that the phone's ringing. I also notice that the phone seems very old, it's one of those that you have to kind of wind and dial up, but I've never really seen one in person before, and I think this is pretty odd. Not knowing what to do, I just stand there and wait for it to stop ringing. It doesn't. It goes on for a good two or three minutes, and I decide that, well I should probably answer it thinking maybe it is one of our stations and they've seen me go in here. I go and answer the phone and say hello. There's no reply and nobody says anything for a good couple of seconds. And then I slowly hear a voice saying, I know what you're doing. Run. And then say hello. No, this is one of the workers on duty. What are you talking about? and the line goes down. Realising that something's definitely off now, I put the phone down 
and my vision goes a bit blurry. I realise now that my hands are shaking and I slowly turn around and walk out of that thing. I then start walking back the way that I've come, almost frozen in fear of what's just happened. I walk up to the hill where I was before and I lay down now. I put my hands on my head and I just lay there for a couple of moments. That's when I hear voices. Now they weren't too close to where I was but I can definitely hear people talking. It sounds like a group of people somewhere much further away from where I am. And with that, I slowly get up. I look in all possible directions but I can't see anyone. I do realise that I need to get out of here now and I start walking very quickly through the snow, uphill. I make my way downhill and eventually back onto another path that we use just for staff members now. I quickly get onto the radio, finally get my senses back and I very quietly say what's happened and that something's definitely off. They keep asking me for my position but because of my fear in my handshake and I'm really struggling to operate the GPS and I'm really struggling to get a signal at that. I can kind of get one bar but nothing's actually registering correctly so I realise that I'm going to have to hike most of the way back now. Thankfully they offer to stay on the line with me and reassure me that things are going to be fine and not to worry that it's probably just an old cabin that we used to use and forgot about. But I keep telling them who spoke to me on the phone and they say nobody. Why would we call you on a telephone when we've actually got radios? And that's when I realised something was seriously off about this situation. Now I eventually make it back to civilization and where my ranger buddies are and I hug them. They take me inside and get me warmed up. I then report everything that happened and tell them that I want to report this to the police and that something's way off. Now they didn't take it too seriously at first and then they just said oh you've probably just gone out too far and got slow blindness and just imagined it but I tell them I know what I saw and I know my radio wasn't working correctly and my GPS at one point. Eventually they do call out the police and they come and I have to go to the station with them and report what I've seen. They say not to worry and that they're going to investigate it further and some of the other rangers also went out to investigate it. But this is the craziest thing that I don't understand. Nobody could ever find that thing. Apparently they went to the exact area where that I saw this and all they could see is a clearing. And weirdly, parts of snow that had nothing there exactly where a building should have been but no building. They actually accused me of clearing it to make up my own story to try and get attention of which actually made me really angry. But I just can't understand that. They found nothing, not a trace of the building that I saw, or any signs of people. Only my own footsteps leading up to the area that was still in the snow, then coming back another way. I didn't know what to think of the whole experience. I still don't now. I just hope that by sharing my story, I somehow get some kind of therapy from this and kind of closure, but I still don't know what to make of it. I don't know who spoke to me on that phone that day or why, and I don't think I want to. Hello everyone, this is the part of the video where there's no more stories, so if you're only here for the stories, and there's plenty on my channel, um, plenty of other channels out there that narrate stories much better than I do. But I'm just here to have a quick update with you all. So, as some of you may know, I've been fairly busy recently. I um, I try to update at the end of videos most of the time, but I don't always. And it's been a probably a month and a bit since I've given you an update. Um, I've just been really busy recently, so. I've not been able to put as much work into narrating stories as I would like to, but um, I'm going to try and upload it as much as I possibly can in the next few weeks, but it would just depend on how busy I am. I'd like to know what you guys have been up to too, so let me know in the comments what you guys have been up to and if you've done anything interesting or anything like that. 
I um, I like to have a dialogue in the comments with you guys and I think to be honest I know I have a very small amount of people that come on this channel but I really appreciate all of you that do and in some ways I find that the less people there are the uh, the more interaction there is and the nicer the comments are anyway so I'm really happy with what I have here and you guys are all really nice but um, yeah let me know what you guys have been up to have you done anything interesting at all are you planning to do anything in the summer as it's currently July so hopefully you guys are going to some nice places I'm not going abroad this year but hopefully hopefully the weather remains good here it's been decent to be honest it's we have days that are really hot but also days that it's been raining too I kind of like it when it's um, in the middle really I don't want it to be boiling hot and humid I kind of like it when it's hot without the humidity if that makes sense because in England all our houses are designed to keep heat in so our houses get really stuffy and there's no real airflow you only really get air conditioning units in like supermarkets and shops and that kind of thing that's one thing I'd love to have if I won the lottery that's that's one of the things I'd do actually I'd get a big air conditioning unit I'd love one of them I um I think probably this is my favourite time of year. I've probably mentioned this on the channel before. I do think this time of year is when people seem happier in general anyway. I suppose it's just the nice weather makes just makes you feel good, doesn't it? When you wake up and it's sunny outside and warm, rather than waking up and it's freezing cold and gloomy and overcast. But um Yeah, I just really like this time of year. I um I'll give you guys an update on I used to give you guys updates on my um, how my gym progress was, didn't I? Which is I've been plodding along, really. I um, I try and exercise as much as I can. Um, it's normally like, I don't know if you guys find the same thing, but it's normally tiredness that will stop me from exercise. It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I'm really tired sometimes, and I just end up just not doing it. But um, I suppose that's when you just have to force yourself to do it, isn't it? But um, yeah, I, I've been maintaining really. I haven't really, you know, made huge progress. I haven't really diminished that much either. So is that the right, right word? Diminish? I don't know. But you know what I mean? It hasn't. I haven't got worse. But um, yeah, I suppose it's just the diet as I find difficult as well. It's not really the exercise. I think exercise I quite, I quite enjoy. It's just the um, it's the eating. <laughs> it's the food that I find difficult most of the time. Even though I do like healthy food, I just prefer unhealthy food. Um, but yeah, I um, I've also been looking at some of the charities that people have suggested. So I'm gonna donate to one of those soon. I try and go through them and make a decision on one but I find it quite hard sometimes that I would like to support multiple charities but um, yeah I'm thinking it's going to be something to do with hopefully children like a children's charity this time so that's what I'm thinking of donating to just in what aspects I'm not entirely sure which one I'm just currently looking but yeah if you have any children's charities that you could recommend then um, then let me know and uh, obviously I'll I'll donate to the charity and I'll uh, I'll put it out there for you guys to have a look at too. Um, but yeah, um, let me know what you you guys have been doing in the comments below. I always try and read your comments. I find them really interesting, and I quite like it when there's like friendly dialogue in the comments. I uh, I like it when people keep it friendly in the comments, and you know everyone supports each other because it feels like I want the channel to feel like a place where people can come to and it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from or anything like that you just get on with people here and that's what I'd quite like it to be I want it to be a nice atmosphere I don't want it to be hate comments I don't want there to be you know arguments or anything like that I just want it to be a nice friendly atmosphere so that's what I'm always aiming for I don't um, you know I just want it to be um, a place that people can come to but yeah um, let me know actually what is the scariest experience that's ever happened to you have you ever had what was it regardless of whether it was something that you know happened 
years ago or if it's something recent or whether it's just just the most scared you've been in a situation and I'll try and think of mine and I'll, I'll let you guys know next time you know when 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 was it and what was the scariest thing that's happened to you because I think there's situations that I find scary <laughs> you know like even if it's something you know that you might think seems silly like being on a plane because that can obviously it feels very unnatural and is that the most scared you've been in turbulence or something like that so yeah anything it can be anything at all it could be you know you I don't know you was in the sea and you got caught by the tide or something it could be any kind of situation something like that you know but um, yeah obviously nothing too personal or too traumatic <laughs> you know just keep it you know like my examples but um, yeah let me know um, in the comments and we can have a bit of a dialogue and I'll discuss it in the next bit actually in the next uh, video but yeah I um, obviously won't mention your names or anything I'll just discuss the topics that, or the situation that you guys bring up um, but yeah let me know what you guys have been up to as well um, I'm gonna try and enjoy the rest of the Sun while it's still sunny today and yeah I'll um, I'll catch you guys in the next video Thanks for listening as always. I appreciate all of you and yeah, speak to you guys soon. Bye.